This video illustrates several graphing options um, and, and uh, also the request of uh, frequency distributions um, in SPSS. So uh, what I have right here is a variable uh, that I've just had called X uh, and these are the values that uh, you actually see in another video where I was uh, creating these different distributions and running graphs using uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, just really quickly, um, you know, when you if you want to put in a variable and then add the values to that variable, uh, you'll use this little toggle down here in SPSS. And under Variable View, you uh, name the variable, you set it up um, in terms of the type of variable that you want. We're having a variable that is uh, numeric. Uh, and because we're assuming our variable is continuous, the uh, measure uh, is uh, going to be treated as scale. So um, at any rate, um, all I did was uh, just enter values on the variable here. So if I want to get um, a distribution of frequencies, relative frequencies, um, cumulative frequencies, and so forth, um, I can go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and to Frequencies. Uh, so I'm going to move my variable over to the variables box and um, by default it says display uh, frequency table so I'm going to leave that alone. Um, if I want um, a graph uh, like a histogram uh, I can go to charts and uh, click on histograms and then if I want to actually see if there's how well the data lines up with a normal curve I can actually click on show normal curve on a histogram and I'll actually have a little overlay uh, so I'll, I'll show you that with and without this click so I'll start off without clicking that um, just uh, FYI uh, if I click on statistics I can ask for other types of uh, summary statistics um, I can ask for measures of central tendency like the mean median and mode um, the uh, standard deviation variance range. I can ask for uh, skewness and kurtosis statistics and so forth. Um, so um, I'll just show you what, what this all looks like. So when I click on OK, uh, in terms of the output, you can see that you know my mean was 5, median was 5.14, mode uh, was 6. Uh, there's my standard deviation variance, uh, skewness and kurtosis statistics and so forth. Um, as you can see, for variable X, this is the uh, frequency distribution, so um, and the total uh, sums up to 16. That's 16 observations within my data set. So these were all the uh, um, values that we observed in our data set. These are the frequencies associated with those values. Uh, the percent column uh, t is basically uh, those relative frequencies times 100%. So you can see that 6.3% of the distribution fell in the first interval, 63 in the second, 12.5, uh, which in the Excel file was rounded up to uh, 0.1, uh, was rounded up to 13%, and so forth. Um, the the valid percent column actually captures um, will will look exactly the same as a percent column if there are no missing uh, values. If there happens to be missing values in the original data set, then part of the percentage uh, column will capture those uh, missing uh, cases. So um, the valid percent is really probably the best uh, column to uh, capture the relative frequencies within the, uh, within the sample data for the actual observations that, that occur. The cumulative percent uh, is just basically capturing uh, the cumulative relative frequencies multiplied by 100%. So as you can see, uh, at the for the uh, highest interval, uh, which um, uh, as you can see has the uh, uh, value of nine, and at the midpoint of nine, uh, it's 100%. So um, there, this is basically capturing those cumulative relative frequencies. So here we have a histogram, and you can see that uh, essentially. Um, you, you can see that uh, the bars touch and the bars are touching at the uh, upper and lower exact limits for each of the intervals. So um, that is um, what the histogram looks like in SPSS. Now let's see what happens if we ask for the uh, normal curve overlay from the charts option. Uh, and so um, you can see 
right here that this is just basically gives me an idea about what the norm, what a normally distributed data set would look like and how closely um, the data that we have in our, our data set approximates that normal curve. So you can see that it's not approximating um, uh, terribly well. Now, now if I want to um, um, look at uh, relative frequency polygons and cumulative frequency polygons and so forth, uh, I can go to uh, uh, graphs, legacy dialogues, and down to a uh, line graph, click on simple and define and then I just basically um, move, I, I had my variable over here originally, move it over to the category axis box and then I have various options for um, what kind of graph that I want. If I want a frequency polygon I just click on uh, N of cases and click on OK and what you'll see right here is uh, the frequency polygon. Um, if I want to actually um, kind of have those um, those markers uh, to it, I can double click on the graph and um, then uh, click on the um, um, graph as, as well here, or rather uh, click on the graph and then uh, right click and then click down on uh, add markers and there we go. We have now the uh, markers and then I'll just click out of this and so now you can see that we have the midpoints for each of our intervals plotted against the frequency counts for, um, for our variable. Um, we can also do this uh, using for the relative frequencies. So I'll just go down here, go back to the line graphs option, and in this case use percentage of cases. Click on OK. And uh, so in this case right here, I'll just double click again, uh, right click and add markers and uh, now we have the relative frequencies that are plotted against uh, the midpoint for each of the intervals. So uh, that's another option. Uh, if I want the um, cumulative relative frequencies and cumulative frequencies I can just uh, go back to the line option, uh, click on simple again and in this case I'm going to use the cumulative N which is the cumulative frequency and plot it, um, click on OK, and double clicking here, and then taking a right click and adding markers. Uh, you can see now we have the uh, cumulative frequencies. One thing to note here is for the cumulative frequencies, they are plotted against the midpoints for each of the intervals. So, um, you know, if you're really assuming your data are, are uh, normal, just, just keep in mind that this kind of violates, I mean, excuse me, if your data are continuous, this sort of violates that idea that you have uh, continuous data. So, um, just uh, kind of keep that in mind. The same goes when you're talking about the cumulative relative frequencies. Um, so, in this case, I'll click on cumulative percent um, and... Um, you know, double click and then right click and add markers. Um, once again, you can see that um, in SPSS it plots the cumulative relative frequencies against the uh, midpoints for each of the intervals. So um, that's just something to kind of keep in mind a little bit of a difference um, between um, what I discuss in the other video um, and, um, and what you see in the SPSS output.